Hi everyone, in the previous video we had discussed about the events happening in the third week of life and in this video we will be discussing about the intra-embryonic mesoderm further. So our focus was very less about the intra-embryonic mesoderm. So to understand the intra-embryonic mesoderm, let's mark this figure which we had actually discussed in the previous video. So uh, this was our view. In the first figure, this structure over here, we know that it is the primitive streak and then we have a primitive bit. Above we have the definitive ectoderm, below we have the definitive endoderm. The red structure over here is the notochord, definitive notochord. This is our connecting stalk which is present at the tail end and at the head end we have the precordial plate. This is marked to give us an orientation after the previous class. Now this is our first view, the horizontal view and this is the view from above. We had discussed how we got this view in our uh, previous section. So let's mark the figures. This is our headband and this structure is the precordial plate. This is our precordial plate. And this is our notochord. So when we view from above the mesodermal part of the trilaminar germ disc, this is our notochord. And behind the notochord, we have the primitive node with the primitive pit. And this would be our primitive streak and beneath it we actually have another area which is the cloacal membrane. So we have our cloacal membrane which is responsible or, or not responsible which will develop into the cloaca or the uh, anal region, the anal opening and finally we have the connecting stalk. With these two figures I get, I hope you will get an orientation of the axis that we are dis going to discuss. Now the question is where is the intraembryonic mesoderm? Now the remaining part, so in the midline we have the notochord, right? The remaining part is the intraembryonic mesoderm, the part that I am going to mark here in red color. All of these regions, it is the intraembryonic mesoderm. So today we will be discussing what happens to the intraembryonic mesoderm and what are the derivatives of intraembryonic mesoderm. So let's get started. So this is the figure, the red one over here. This is our notochord and this whole region on both sides of notochord is our intraembryonic mesoderm. Now what happens is that a longitudinal groove will develop on either side of the notochord and that will divide the intraembryonic mesoderm into three parts. So intraembryonic mesoderm is divided into three parts. So which are these three parts? So or just, or, uh, just uh, paraxial to the notochord we have cubical structure, then we have the second region uh, over the groove which is marked by the green lines and then beside it we have the third region. Now the first region that is present just beside the notochord which or we could say it is present paraxial that is beside the uh, central axis that is called as the paraxial mesoderm. So we have the paraxial mesoderm. And beside it, we have this green line, which is called the low, uh, intermediate mesoderm. And lateral to the intermediate mesoderm, we have our third region, which is called the lateral plate mesoderm. So these are the three parts of the intraembryonic mesoderm. We have the paraxial mesoderm, we have the intermediate mesoderm, and we have the lateral plate mesoderm. So first let's discuss about the paraxial mesoderm the paraxial mesoderm. It develops into somites. Now what are the somites? So we could say that this paraxial mesoderm, the cubical structure which we have drawn here is what we call as a somite. Now when we speak about the somites, what we need to understand, somites are actually cubical structures that are present on the paraxial mesoderm and they could be present at two parts. That is one is about the aortic vesicle which is the pre aortic part. We have the pre aortic part and then there is a post aortic area, area or the post aortic somite. Now where would be the aortic vesicle? The aortic vesicle would be uh, around the head region. If this is the aortic vesicle, 
the somines that are present over here are the preotic somines whereas this would be the the somines that are present below are the postotic sick uh, postotic somines now otic vesicles they give rise to the ear uh, ear region and the preotic part or the preotic somines they have two features first one they are unsegmented and secondly they give rise to the head and muscle of head region what about the postotic part the postotic part they are segmented and there are uh, 44 pairs of somite in our body so this is what we need to understand about somites let's discuss further about somites the distribution so let's discuss about the distribution of somites so these 44 somites they are divided into there are four occipital eight cervical 12 thoracic five lumbar five sacral eight to ten oxygen so these are the 44 pairs of uh, somites that are present in the intra embryonic paraxial mesoderm now let's speak about the derivatives derived from each somite now each somite is cubical in shape and what happens is that diagonally they are divided into so this is our dorsal part this is our lateral part uh, this will be our medial part and this will be our ventral part now they are divided diagonally into a ventro medial region or the ventro medial region of the somite and we have a dorso lateral region right now the dorso lateral region is again divided into a medial part and a lateral part so medial part this will develop into the or this region is called as the myotome whereas this lateral part of the dorso lateral part of uh, of the somite is called as the dermatome whereas this ventro medial part this is called as the sclerotome so the somites have a ventro medial sclerotome and a dors and a dorso lateral dermo myotome now what are the derivatives from each layer now the myotome they give rise to the as the names suggest they give rise to the somatic muscles or the skeletal muscles inside the adult human body okay and about the sclerotome the sclerotome gives rise to the vertebrae and the ribs vertebrae and ribs the dermatome gives rise to the dermis of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue so these are the derivatives of the somites so we have the sclerotome giving rise to vertebrae and ribs we have the dermatome giving rise to dermis of skin and subcutaneous tissue and we have the myotome giving rise to the somatic muscles now what about the uh, now let's move to the second part which is the intermediate uh, mesoderm this is our intermediate mesoderm the intermediate mesoderm will develop into the nephrogenic duct as the name suggest we can understand what happens right uh, it develops into nephrogenic cord and the nephrogenic cord will give rise into the kidney and gonads so these are the derivatives of the intermediate mesoderm now coming finally to the lateral plate mesoderm what happens to the lateral plate mesoderm what happens is that in the lateral plate mesoderm lacunae will start to appear all over so there will be lacunar spaces which develop in the lateral plate mesoderm and these lacunar spaces will actually fuse to form a coelom just like uh, they fuse to form a coelom in the uh, Uh, when we discussed about the extra embryonic mesoderm there was uh, 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 the lacunar spaces coalesced to form an extra embryonic coelom in a similar way the same process happens in the intra embryonic mesoderm and that will lead to the formation of intra embryonic coelom now this intra embryonic coelom what does it give rise to it develops into the pleuro pericardio peritoneo canal as the name suggest it gives rise to the pleural cavity it develops into the pericardial cavity and it develops into the peritoneal cavity now the lateral plate mesoderm it actually uh, because of uh, with the development of 
these two with the development of the intraembryonic serum the lateral plate mesoderm divides into two parts just like the uh, extraembryonic mesoderm so the lateral plate mesoderm with the development of canal they get divided into the two parts the first one is the somatopleuric part or the somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm and then we have the splanchnopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm now the splanchnopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm uh, will give rise to will give rise to the visceral layer of these cavities so we have the pleural cavity pericardial cavity and the peritoneal cavity so they will the splanchnopleuric layer gives rise to the visceral layer of these cavities and connective tissue of the corresponding system so in pleural cavity they develop into the muscles and connective tissue associated with the respiratory system uh, with pericardium they will develop into the muscles and connective tissue of the cvs central uh, cardiovascular system and finally in the git they will give rise to the muscles and connective tissue what about the somatic pleuric layer of intraembryonic mesoderm the somatopleuric layer of intraembryonic mesoderm will give rise to the somatic layer of these cavities so with that we have discussed what happens to the intraembryonic mesoderm and the derivatives from it to summarize the somites are present paraxially and these somites are 44 in number they have a ventromedial part they have a dorsal lateral part the ventromedial part develops into sclerotome which gives rise to vertebrae and ribs the dorsal lateral part develops into the dermomyotome of which the dermatome gives rise to dermis of skin and subcutaneous tissue the myotome gives rise to the somatic muscles and next coming to the intermediate mesoderm it gives rise to nephrogenic cord which develops into the kidney and the gonads and coming to the lateral plate mesoderm an intraembryonic serum develops inside it which further develops into the pleural pericardio peritoneal canal which gives rise to the uh, respective pleural pericardial and peritoneal canals the lateral plate mesoderm will then divide into the somatopleuric and the splanchnopleuric layer somatopleuric layer gives rise to the somatic layer of these cavities whereas the splanchnopleuric layer develops into the visceral layer of these cavities as well as the muscles and connective tissue of this system so that's for this video we have completed intraembryonic mesoderm and its derivatives